Good day, my good friends. My name is David Apquillim, the best poet from the 14th century, the biggest romantic from the Middle Ages, hello, <laughs> biggest flirt in Wales, the greatest Welsh poet, full stop. <laughs> I live in Llambadarn, near Aberystwyth, and every Sunday I go to the church to pray and to meet one or two. Ni bi sil yn Llanbadarn, na bewn ac eraill a'i barn, am y wyneb at y ferch goeth, am gwegil at ddiw gwyw goeth. I wrote that. <laughs> It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Do you want to know a secret? <clears throat> There's a cruel man called Ebua Bach. Disgusting, horrible man, a um, He wants to kill me. Now, maybe it's a bit of my fault. He caught me oh, mm, 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 smooching with his wife, Morvid. <laughs> and do you know what? My other girlfriend, Dudgi, she isn't happy with me as well. <sighs> so, I need to leave. I need to flee. Say goodbye to Aberystwyth. Adieu to my girlfriends. Hello. <laughs> and go to somewhere called Gwent because there lives Lord Ivor Heil. <sighs> Wales in the Middle Ages was full of wonder and magic. So don't be surprised if animals or even elements of the weather start speaking to us. <laughs> ah! Ah! A seagull. Oh, Gwylan in Welsh. Er Uilan deg ar lanu di oer in llyw ag eiri Ah! ah! David Ab Gwilym! Where are you going? Ah, I've got important business in the South East I've heard that you've been a naughty boy Well, it's hard to behave all the time If you give me the rest of the poem I'll read you the story of Pwyll and Rhiannon. Of course I'll finish the poem to you, dear Seagull. Uh, tell us the story of Pwyll and Rhiannon. <sighs> One afternoon, a long time ago, the lord of the seven cantrebs of Dyved, Pwyll, was just chilling on his throne in Narbus after a busy time hunting with his men at Glyn Keech. He stood to attention when the prettiest girl you ever saw passed by on a horse and Poith said to his men, Who is that beautiful girl? After her, at once! It was impossible to catch up with Rhiannon. But after a lot of trouble, Poith finally met Rhiannon and managed to marry her, even though a bad man called Gwawl came between them. And there is a lot more to this story, but your journey from Ceredigion to Gwent is a long one. Uh, give me the rest of the poem. Of course, dear Seagull. And what a great story. Poith a Rhiannon. Wow. <clears throat> Here you go. Er uilan deg ar lanu di oer, yn llyw a geiri neu wenlloer, yngor aid wrth yr angor, law law a mi, Lily Moore. Huh. He must have flown away to steal chips from tourists in Aberystwyth. <laughs> Let me explain to you now a little bit more on how things worked in Wales back in the Middle Ages. <sighs> Poet? like me, would travel across the country, writing poetry for the wealthy people. You see, us poets were the superstars of our time. Hello, Jemai. <laughs> and we'd write poems, making the wealthy people feel nice and important. 
and one of the most important people of our time was Lord Ivor Heil. And he would pay me by letting me stay in his luxurious home. Oh. Is it windy, or is it me? <laughs> oh, oh. <clears throat> I am the wind, and I blow through people's hair. The wind can speak. If you write me a poem, I'll tell you the story of Branwen. That sounds like a bargain. Go for it. <clears throat> Branwen from Wales and Matholwch, the king of Ireland, got married. And the hope was that that would keep the peace between Wales and Ireland. For a period of time, things were quiet and the two islands and their kings got on well. The trouble started when Matholwch stopped treating his wife Branwen like a queen and forced her to work in the kitchens from morning to night. The cook would beat her if she didn't work hard enough. So it wasn't a happy marriage between Branwen and Matholwch. But with the help of a little starling to get a message back to Wales to her brother, Bendy Gaidvran, Bendy Gaidvran and his soldiers came to rescue Branwen. And then things turned ugly as Matholwch and his armies began fighting against the Welsh. Where's the poem then, Dav? Yes, and it's a good one. <laughs> a gwint. Er wibberwint hellint halaw, a gwrdd drws da gerdda draw, Gwr erestwyd, garw e sain, dryd heb droed heb adain. Who are you? Did you see the wind? No. <laughs> uh, a magpie, obviously. <laughs> are you the famous poet, David Ap Gwilym? Yeah, <laughs> David Ap Gwilym. Best poet in Wales, biggest romantic, biggest flitted Wales. Hello. I've heard about you. <laughs> you tried to steal a Bua Bach's yes. wife. But, um, tell you what, uh, if I uh, write you a poem, can you read that story? Of course. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, this is the third branch. Now, the villain is called Lloyd Vab Kilcoid, who has set a spell across Daved. Every time the mist comes, the world changes and people disappear. Rhiannon and Poil from the first story, do you remember them? Well, Poil has died by now. And Rhiannon, good news, has a son, Praderi. <laughs> Bad news, they both disappear in the mist. But who's looking for you? Mana Wadan, Rhiannon's new husband, and Praderi's wife, Kigva. <laughs> There's a lot of trouble with mice eating all the wheat, and a pregnant mouse turns into a pregnant woman, and suddenly Praderi and Rhiannon appear. Ta da! <laughs> and that's the end of the third branch. Wow! Diolch, thank you. Oh, yeah. Here you go. It's a good one. Don't move. Er <laughs> bioden. Me na never oedd hefyd y beef helaf edyn o'r byd. Carry on. Yn adeilad brad brydferth ym hen gyrchedd perfedd perth. Is there more? Yeah. <coughs> O ddau lafrydd galch balch borth, a'i chymar yn ei chymorth. Oi! 
<sighs> right, we've done three branches of the Mabinogi. Ah, there's one more. Four branches of the Mabinogi. <laughs> Who will we meet next? <gasps> ah, this is a great story. <laughs> it starts with a wizard called Gwydion. Flowers, flowers, flowers. Dandelions, daisies, daffodils, roses, primroses, foxgloves and bluebells. Mix them all in a big cauldron and hey presto, here she is! Yes, Gwydion created a beautiful woman out of flowers and he said, your name is Blood Dayweth and you will become the wife of Lle Llaw Guffes. And Lle Llaw Guffes fell in love with Blood Dayweth, the woman of flowers. But what's this? Blood Dayweth ran away with a handsome man called Gronu Peber. And when Gwydion found out, he was angry. He was furious. In fact, he was tamping. Blood Dayweth's punishment was to live as an owl for the rest of her life, coming out at night when everyone else was fast asleep. And talking of sleep, the sun is setting on us too, and we've nearly come to the end of our journey. Aha! Here we are! Ivor Hiles Court! <laughs> in Gwent! <laughs> Better check if he's in. Great Lord Ivor Hyle, are you in? It's David Up William. I better read the poem. <laughs> Ivor Hyle, a nest. Nest wengoith, windoith, windaint. Ivor air of Iroriaith, Degur vai, Degur of Ith, Mavi eu, Freithlew, Fruithlown. Mair euda da, Maur euda thou. <laughs> Am I just amazing? The greatest Welsh poet ever. Ivor, you better let me in. Ivor, hi! Hey!